good morning and welcome to the second part of SAP REP development series. In today's session, we will be covering the overview of SAP REP model, programming model architecture, and understand the three phases of REP development that is data modeling and behavior business service exposure and business service consumption. We'll try to also understand what business object is, how it is linked with uh, other entities using associations and compositions. With this, let's start. This is the architecture of the RAP. It has got three sections. One is where we will actually define the data model and the behavior. Most of the data models that we will be looking into is done using CDS. On top of the CDS entities, a behavior definition and implementation will be created. Once the behavior is declared, moves to the service provisioning section where we define the service definition which will define the scope that we need to expose out of the behavior definition that we have already defined and service binding will actually create a OData protocol that can be used to create the OData service using either UI or we or web API. <clears throat> Let's dive into the first section called data modeling and behavior. Data modeling is mainly done using CDS and CDS with CDS it offers a modeling structure that is used to create a semantically rich data models using SAP HANA libraries or table functions. The data definition language of ABAP CDS has been enhanced nati to natively support the definition. It deals with the corresponding business logics. So CDS will be created from various database table and will be used for creating the RAPO data. RAP uses CDS to define and organize the data models. It provides a framework for defining and consuming semantic data. It, CDS are the main fundamental blocks for the application. With CDS modeling, we define a business object. Now, business object is nothing but a hierarchy that we look going ahead how it is being blocked but that is the building block by using various CDS entities out of which one root entity must be defined for any business object and that will be the starting point of the RAP O data that we are creating. Database model that are supported currently are the transactional uh, access which nothing but you define a behavior uh, definition and implementation on the business object or the query access which is nothing but just a read-only application can be defined no CUD operations are required what is a business object let us first understand what business object is the business object <laughs> defines a real-time artifact in the enterprise application development for example we have sales order invoice travel purchase requisition everything that has a functionality behind it is defined as a business object now business object will have one root node and can have multiple child nodes further the child nodes can have a grandchild as well so this hierarchy continues, it is a hierarchical order that business object consists of. On top of it, we define the behavior 
on the data model that is already been created the, the behavior will have CRUD operations actions logs authorization feature control etc once the behavior is defined we create a service definition and service binding that will actually use the runtime to execute the business logic while creating a behavior definition there are two ways of doing it one is the managed and one is unmanaged we'll look into both of them uh, going ahead majorly the runtime implementation where the actual implementation is done that will use either the ABAP or EML coding which is entity manipulation language we will look into EML as well going forward now as we can see we have a root node and this is a parent entity by itself because root node will not have is not a child of anything it's a root node that will contain a child entry and this child entry has a root node as a parent entry and hence root node is always a parent entry as well similarly the child node if it is having another child a grandchild for the root node then this first node will work as a child to the root as well as parent to its child there might and and this hierarchy continues and the last node that doesn't have any child node is called a leaf entity this hierarchical representation of the business object is called composition tree for us to define the linkage between two entities which are tightly coupled we should always use compositions as can be seen on the root node we have defined composition to the child node which is the root node is contact and the child node is address uh, composition is defined on the root node for the child node using composition one to many the cardinality is one to many at the same time we also have to define the association to parent in your child entry to your parent entity with the corresponding key fields this will define a tightly coupled composition to between two entities of a business object once you define your CDS entities all the child node parent node is done then we for each and every entity we have to go and define a behavior definition that uses the behavior definition language as can be seen this is a sample piece that I have taken from one of my development a testing development that I have done it defines a behavior for the previously created CDS entity called con for contact which has a implementation in its own separate class that will be used to do the coding using EML and ABAP for the particular entity it also defines whether it has a lock numbering authorizations etc the CRUD operation will be defined using create update and delete with the field characteristic whether you want it as a read only or mandatory these cannot be defined here if the numbering is managed you can define the numbering managed as well here this also has a association to the address so the address will always be 
created using the association to the contact entity further on top of it you can define some actions which will be used to have a functionality added functionality apart from the uh, create update and delete on top of this BOPF it also supports the determination that will allow us to determine field values depending on certain criteria finally if you have the field names and the entity property names different it allows us to define the mapping in this case for my contact I am defining that okay my middle name without an underscore is a CDS entity field name that will be mapped to the middle underscore name of the database table CMS contact this is a database table okay. as as can be seen we should also go ahead and define a behavior definition for address entity as well and that should be defined just below this behavior definition so behavior definition will be created for the root entity and all the related child entities behavior definition should be included in the same file now behavior definition when you are creating this is an unmanaged um, example where it allows you to define the saver class everything will be in in one class and the related CUD operations in a different class for the managed uh, scenario the saver will be done by SAP framework so there is no need to define the saver class separately etag master is used using a field name that allows us to manage the versionings and it will allow us to have the data consistency that means if user 1 is if user 1 is editing one entity users 2 will not be allowed to edit the changes there will be a pop up that will be shown by the rap framework that somebody else is already editing it please get the latest change and then move on moving on to the structure how it is as we have discussed we can have in a CDS model we can have one root entity and multiple child and grandchild entities with the cardinality that is defined so in this example a root entity can have multiple child entities and one one uh, child uh, one child entity belongs to one root entity but for a root entity we define the behavior definition in that behavior definition if there is anything that you want to define a behavior for your child entity should also be included here finally at the same time when we actually create the behavior definition the behavior pool that is nothing but a behavior implementation classes would be created you can have one or more than one implementation class for each entity in the CDS model this behavior definition as we have seen is written in a language called business behavior definition language called BDL moving on now what we define in a behavior behavior definition will always have certain behavior characteristics as we have seen e tag draft feature controls authorizations these are all characteristics that comes in with the behavior definition in rap framework and it also has certain operations the operations are nothing but our create update delete operations you also have a create by association there are certain actions that you can perform determinations locking is again 
one operation that is been done similarly we also have read by association if there is any association and also some for functions functions are similar to read by associations but only for the read read functionality you cannot have uh, the uh, update create and update and delete functionality there now behavior implementations as we have seen in the last slide can be done in a behavior pool classes and we can have a separate implementation class or we can have one single implementation class that scatters to all the entities in the behavior definition once a runtime is done once the behavior definition is done a service binding is created during the runtime how behavior will execute it will always have the data stored in the transactional buffer from where the behavior will read and update uh, the the transactional buffer once we the the user is pressing the save button a saver sequence will be done will be called that will actually go and update the data in the sap hana database with the managed this is with the managed behavior definition scenario the saving will be done by the rap framework but if it is unmanaged we will have to write the save sequence method we have to explicitly write the save sequence method there are five methods finalize check before save save and clean up methods that that has to be done with the adjust numbering and stuff like that we will look into that save sequence in our upcoming sessions so that was all about the rap architecture thank you and before we wind up I'm requesting you to like share and subscribe and if you have any questions please comment with that thank you and happy learning